Hey, good morning. OJ here. It's coffee time. Well, we've already had coffee. Now it's water time. So we're out for an early morning walk here. We come to the Criddle Vane Old Homestead and I guess this provincial park here. So we're going to go for a tour around and walk the pass. Somebody said it's just beautiful in the fall, but I couldn't wait. I had to come and have a look and uh, follow along. I know you'll love it. Lots of crickets today, mm -hmm. chirping away. Oh, should have had a stick. It says walk with a stick. And we come to our first spot, which is the Well Oak. They used to get their water here. And we're probably still on the aquifer at this place. The Well Oak was as much a part of St. St. Albans as the barns of the house itself. The well gave good water and the oak tree cast shade over the area, creating a cool oasis on a hot day. Mm -hmm. 1,750 pails of water to create an ice rink. Mm -hmm. Not very big, but it's pretty. Anyways, we'll carry on. Well, that's an old laboratory. A bug house. Bug house. Go to the Wallanisa Museum. You can see a lot of the bugs that he collected. I'll have a look around. That. I'm not sure whether the door opens or not. You know what? There's one way to find out. Oh, it is open. Pictures of different plants. Norman Griddle, 1933. Must have had something to do with the bugs, but we'll carry on around the path here.
grass. Yeah. My toes are wet. <laughs> yep. That wacky oak there. Oh, look at that. An old hitching post there. Looks like it's been used. Yeah, it's recently. been used, yeah. A little more spoke. Could have been when they had that uh, astronomer's night yeah, a few weeks ago. A week or so. Nice mold trap. Okay. Don't see any choke cherries for you, though. I'm looking. <laughs> I can be looking. <laughs> I'm sure there's some out here somewhere. In case you guys don't know, my wife loves choke cherries. <laughs> I forgot their car in there. <laughs> you guys can see that or not. I'm going to go over and have a peek. Uh, yeah. The poison ivy, too. It's a little fixing up there, but yeah. The dent in the roof? Yeah. Just a minor. On the other side, too. Oh, yeah. Quite a few things on the other side. Yeah. <coughs> there and all the way back into there. Oh, yeah. That was was put together with some wood too. So looks like an old trough. An old trough there. there yeah. yeah. So you can't just run down the trails. You miss all these fun little things off to the side. Beautiful out here. It is. Quiet. One, lo one lonely spruce tree. Yeah. The frogs chirping on you. See, so I cut man. down a few trees, I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't see many choke cherries though. But I have some choke uh, cherry trivia. No. <laughs> the way to know that choke cherries are ripe is to remember all this Presley died on August 16th. And the reason I make that association is on the day that Elvis died. My brother Jamie and my sister Vicky and I were out picking choke cherries. And we had, I guess, Dad's car, and the radio was on. And it came on the radio that Elvis Presley had died. So that's how I remember. Oh, it's time to pick choke cherries. <laughs> and there's a few right there that you missed. Uh oh. Uh -oh. You missed them. You missed them. Walking too fast again. Yeah. Well, if there's one, there'll be more. <laughs> oh. 
ticked the squirrel off. <laughs> We're in their territory again. Yeah. Those uh, cicadas. Somebody could just get on a treadmill and they could uh, just watch, walk with your video. Oh, look right below that, the poison ivy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just when I say get on a treadmill, you decide to stop them. Yeah. Look, <laughs> smell, <laughs> smell the not ro the roses. The smell the not the roses. The asters. The asters. <laughs> Yeah, you can get on a treadmill and just, just walk uh, along with us. And yeah. Ooh, we're coming up to open field here. It's a pretty nice leisurely treadmill yeah. walk. Oh, okay, choke cherries look, there, but one. Oh, one. Oh, yeah. You want to see your asters? There's lots of asters there. And lots and lots of poison ivy, yeah. so step back or your shoes will have poison ivy yeah. juice on them. And you might not get it, but I sure will. Mom used to get poison ivy just from uh, firewood in the, firewood in the yeah. winter. Well, there's some wide open prairie. Did you happen to look to see how long this walk is? Oh, four or five miles. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You guys aren't going to be doing anything but watching this movie now, so... Might as well... Walk along. Get some coffee. Get a glass of water. You don't even need a treadmill. Just no. put it on the big screen TV and yeah. do the walk at home videos that I used to do. But haven't done in a long time. Maybe I can use this for my walk at home. Walk, we better pick up the pace walk, walk. if we're going to... Yeah, walk, walk. The yeah. pace is a much faster pace than what we're going. We better speed up. We're all... Walk. 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 <laughs> Place the pusher down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slow her down. Amberly liked walking with me. We haven't done it in a long time. Maybe she'd like to do a walk through here. All the burning grasses and stuff. Probably more flowers out here, though. Yeah, it's just fun. I don't know. I miss my prairie flowers. It's a different type of year this year. Oh, they're out there because I see other people post them. the benches when you need them. <laughs> well, there's the shade. Although it's there not really, it's, just, it's not a bad day for walking. Oh, yeah. It nice hasn't got day. hot yet. That's why we're coming in the morning. Yeah. Round and round and round we go. Oh, we're coming up to a sign, though. No. Uh-oh. 
Don't say we didn't see the sign. <laughs> I didn't see the sign. There's a fork in the road. Yes, there is. Tent Patch in St. Albans. The Criddlevane family arrived at the homestead August 1882. Their first accommodations were two tents which were located in this spot. With winter coming, a house was the priority. Not knowing how to build, Percy hired two neighbors to construct the house while he and Edwy then, 11, cut and hauled logs from spruce woods. They moved into the house at Christmas. With only a wood stove for heat and chinking between the logs falling out, it was a cold first winter. I imagine it was. Yes. An addition was built in 1886, and the following year the house received its crowning glory. Two lightning rods from England. The family lived in the log house for 24 years. When it was time to move into the new house in 1906, Percy wrote in his diary. Going to begin the exodus from the log house where we have lived so long, where four of the children have been born, where Elise died, and where we have passed through the early hardships of pioneering. Many a jolly party and lots of other pleasures have we had in it, and now its glory is to fade. Hmm. So, this way? Well, I think this is where the tent site is. So we're going to check yeah. it out. I see. It's just a little loop. A little campsite. Yeah. Well, there it is. There you go. I wonder, though, there wouldn't have been that very many. Like, these are all small trees. Yeah. I wonder what there was for trees. Well, it when had to be bigger here. trees in here because they built that log home. Well, they got them from spruce woods, though. Oh, with the log house, yeah. Because he lived, I think, in that log house for I think, yeah, 20, the, the, 25 the years. The logs right? were hauled from Spruce Woods, though. No. So not from here. That's not that far away. No, but... Oh, you hear the spray planes. Yeah, just dis disrupt our video. <laughs> They didn't get the, the memo. I was doing a video this morning. <laughs> you can see how much uh, dew is on the grass. Mm -hmm. Their feet are, or at least my feet, are soaked. No, no, I'll just give you a look at that. <laughs> Mine are soaked right through. Yep. My canvas runners are not the best choice, I guess. But they are the closest to bare feet. Yeah, that's nice. Which I'd prefer, but you know. not this cowboy. <laughs> A is post. Oh, look A look random it. post. Look at that. A random post. <laughs> and somebody just put it there. Is that where the other tent was? Mm -hmm. It's not mowed though. A pair of grass here. I kind of like this. I can't imagine what it was like to just come out and live on the prairie. A hundred years ago, yeah. Well, even even when Mum came, when Mum and Dad got married in 1948, Mum moved from Toronto. She was a city girl and moved out to a little house on the prairie that didn't have, well, they had coal oil lamps, they didn't have running water, and I don't know how she did it, but... She did it. <laughs> she did.
and didn't run away back to Toronto. Yeah. And then had eight kids. Well, yeah. six of us would have been in the little house, and then they built the basement. We lived in the basement for five years, and then Jamie and Vicky. Jamie would have been born in the basement. Vicky must have been. She might have been in the basement too. I'm not sure. Nice and shady in here. Beautiful pathway. Poison ivy starting to turn color. Yeah. Well, it's easier to spot when it's colorful. Yep. But there sure is a lot of it. Yep. Wouldn't want to go off the pathway here. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> this reminds me of when we lived on the Wolfdale Road by Carberry the bush yep. we had back there and it was full of poison ivy too. Yep. And if we could have got two cents a pound I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> birds at home though. Seems like it. Seems like we have more birds at home than anywhere. But we go walking. You just never know what you're going to see. Oh no, see a bear or anything. <laughs> You'll be alright, you can run faster than I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll videotape it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here I am, all this telling Justin he's going to get eaten yeah. by a bear. Yeah. At least he's got a gun when he's around them. Yeah. And bear spray, which we have neither, so. No. But there were no signs saying beware of bears. <laughs> well, we might not have seen them. <laughs> well, we might not have seen the sign. It looks like a lot of pathway up ahead. Yep. I uh, still think you should pick up the pace and make this a good treadmill walk. <laughs> that. Walk. Well, you'll be able to tell when you're done just how long the walk was, how many yep. minutes it took. We're not too far along. Sure hope your battery's all charged up. <laughs> yeah, otherwise <laughs> come and do it again, I guess. You have fun with that. Yeah.
really nice and shady in this part. Some spruce. You might have to put some creepy, <laughs> creepy music in here. A haunted forest? Yep. Hmm. Oh, another fork in the road that we're not going to... Oh, it's an open area. Maybe we should check we that out. We better check it out. Looks like a nice camping spot. It does look like a nice camping <laughs> spot. Just a random spot in the middle of the bush. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Maybe yeah. this is where oh, they maybe look this the stars. Is, maybe this is where they looked at the stars. Because they'd have to be out in the open. Yeah. No, I'm Lena? sure somebody else can tell us that. Somebody that actually made it out here for that. And trimming, yeah, they had to trim a lot of trees to get back in here. Yeah. Oh. Squirrels letting everybody know we're here. There's a paragana growing back in here. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Like that's. Somebody had to bring that in here or something. Well, the caragana was common at any old homestead, yeah. but obviously this was either its spot could have spread, I guess, from where we were, but it seems to be all through here. Yeah. There's another opening over there. Or is it just the other side of the one we're at? No. No, they don't mind. No, because that one was all closed in. Oh, my shoelace is untied, sopping wet, and there's another pathway to that opening, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, another pathway that way. Well, it's, might as well go in there. There's a nice big oak tree. Yeah. Oh, there are lots of little trails in this area. Yeah. yeah. Big old oak trees. So and look at that, some caragans. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's go up the hill. Yeah. Okay. Lots of caragans up there. Oh, look at this here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, what am I looking at? Fungi growing on the tree. I don't think there's poison ivy in there. You probably. Mm, I can get my camera working. You probably have to get closer with it. Other pathways a lot closer. Yeah. It's mm. kind of neat the way it's growing on the tree. Yeah, it's a straight sideways. Uh, sideways tree. Sideways. A little sideways yeah. tree. Not like our old sideways yeah. tree. Well, there's another sign. Maybe this will tell us where. Oh, there's a foundation. Oh, that's just the foundation. Mm. Oh, the garden view. Mm. Oh, come on. Garden view. Stewart's house was called Garden View. Just down the slope was a large garden, brimming with flowers, vegetables, and strawberries, raspberries, and fruit trees. Garden View was built in 1919 with a house raising bee for Stuart and his new bride Ruth. The large bird bath was built under a tall oak and easily viewed from the window so the family could watch the birds. Stuart enjoyed the many variations of flowers he grew, pansies, roses, sunflowers and lilies. He developed a strain of lily that was named after him, Lilium Stuart Cridley. In 1968, at the age of 91, Stewart was recognized at the first convocation at Brandon University. He received an honorary doctorate of science for his lifelong work studying mammals on his own and with his siblings. Stewart published more than 20 papers on the subject. 
One of Stuart's most prized possessions was the badge he was given when appointed to the Manitoba Game Advisory Committee. Hmm. There's a picture. So that little that opening when we went and looked at, that was the garden. You know, can you see this closer up? So that would explain why there's so much caragana. This was their yard. Yeah. And there's there's what's trail. left of the foundation. Trail goes that way. The well, trail that, goes yeah. that way. So, well, should we go this way? And, oh, look uh, at this. This is the, the bird bath. Yeah. Underneath right the big old... Right under the tree. Oh. I thought they said... What did they say about I thought he said it was an oak tree. Not. What is this? Well, there is an oak tree back over there. Yeah. Something else, the, the spruce tree's grown up with the oak. Yeah. There's the oak back there a bit. So, Which way? I don't know. Should we just check here? Is that just go back where we were? I don't know. And let's go this way. That's that the bird bath. Yeah. There's so many different trails you could take and explore yeah. out here. Kind of like that museum. <laughs> just, it's a maze. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're back to the home site here. Okay. Well, it's, uh, it's, well there's more trails. Let's go up ahead and we'll, well, we'll take just, another one. Maybe we should just go back and take, take one. Detour? Yeah. Okay. So that was where the well was that we were looking at before. So, because we don't want to miss anything. There's the beautiful oak tree. You can yeah. look and see how big that is now. There's a there's quite a few big oak trees out here. Way up, no call rusty. <laughs> That's showing my age, one of my friendly giants. Yeah. In case anybody wonders why he says that. Okay, we're going down this trail instead. This trail or up or this trail. Or that trail. Let's go on go that trail. Yeah. Let's walk around the foundation. Yeah. Oh, look, Lily of the Valley. Mm -hmm. We recognize it because I have so much at home. And on the other side, we have poison ivy. Yeah. We have poison ivy mixed in there, so we won't uh, go too close to that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Even after all these years, it's still growing. More tarragana. Yeah. Probably have beautiful tarragana hedges. Yeah. Oh, look over here in the bush. Oh. Stepping pretty close to poison ivy, so we won't go too close mm -hmm. to that. Look at that. Yeah, this is a cemetery. What? Yeah, it's a cemetery up. Is it? Oh, okay, there it is. Remember oh, reading. Look here, there's rocks here, like this is part of the... Where is it? Oh, no, it's a root. It looked like rocks, yeah. but it's a root. Okay, well, here's the cemetery. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of tombstones. Family. Okay, I'm out of breath, but <coughs> <laughs> okay. You got that one there. Yep. Home to rest. The family cemetery was created when Elise passed away in 1903. Percy wrote of her passing. 
My memory keeps going backwards and forwards over the 41 years of changes and vicissitudes, he liked big words, through which we have traveled together. I see a thousand things to tell me of her work and doings and how steadily and quietly she labored for the general good. Stuart made Elise the cement headstone, and they buried her beneath the boughs of the spruce tree. From the oldest to the youngest, Alma was the next to be laid to rest <coughs> in the cemetery. Oh, she was just 23. Little Alma was a girl with a sunny disposition who made pets of the calves and piglets. <coughs> <coughs> it was a sad time at St. Albans as she slowly succumbed to cancer. Hmm. Within a year of Alma's tragic death, Percy passed away. Then, sadly, Alice followed a few weeks later. As the family members passed, they had been brought home to the homestead or to the cemetery at Milford. The Criddle Vane homestead, the site of grand parties and picnics, lawn tennis and golf tournaments, as well as the study of nature and art, was sold in 1960. Maida and Evelyn were the last to live here before they retired to the west coast. Today, members of the Criddle and Vane families are still living in the area, as well as across Canada. Many return to visit the homestead often. Hmm. Uh, let's uh, start at the beginning over here, the very first one. Okay. Under the spruce tree. Yeah. Oh, you can't can't read it very good, can you? No. And then there's okay. Talbot Criddle. Let's go through to the very back there. There's Stuart Criddle right behind here on the side. Mm -hmm. Most of them are too hard to read. Yeah. Oh, look at this tree that come them down. Yeah. <coughs> Can't really read. Look this. at the tree here. Oh, yes. Wow. 1875. Is that the big tree they were talking that about? That was probably the big tree, yes. Mm -hmm. This is Norman Criddle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Percy Criddle. Oh, um, here's the, the stone that was made. At least oh, yeah. vein right there. So this would be the spruce tree then. Yeah. Oh, look at the size of it too. Sure hope that one doesn't come home but come home. Come down for a while, but it's got a lot of dead branches, doesn't it? Yeah. Backing up would be better and then, mm -hmm. then I don't have to turn around again. Elma and Julia Cow Cowan or Gowan? Gowan. Elma. Elma Criddle. That one says Elma. Arthur uh, Author Author and Naturalist. And okay, and this one is another Elma Criddle. That one's nineteen seventeen. This one's two thousand and one, so and then <coughs> Maida, she was one of the last ones. 1982, so that's... Yeah, no, she was one of the ones that went to mm -hmm. the coast. Talbot, girl, sportsman and naturalist. Cool. And a bench. And a bench, yeah. Cool. Away we go. Okay. 
Well, it's starting to get warm now. Yep. Sweat's working now. Well, we're just about back to where we started, but yep. we didn't see everything back here. No. There's a beautiful tree. Take two of them. Yeah. These ones here. The big old scotch pine. I'll take a tour by the potties. <laughs> the Which, important things yeah, here. Important things, because you never know when you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> and no, folks, they're not flush. Is that a, that's a lilac hedge? Yeah. So we missed up there, and yeah, we'll go. we this did way. all this. Yeah. This way. Oh, we did, where did we miss? We oh, we missed. We missed a lot because we went that way first. Oh yeah, that's right. This is it up, though. Yeah, they put a tin roof on it to kind of preserve us mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah, it's all closed up. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything behind. No. no. You check it out. even power there. Yep, there's power here. Yeah. Well, let's just walk back a little bit again. You see this? All lilacs there. Oh, and, and look at how tall the caragana is. And the caraganas are just huge now. That's like the caragana we had by Portage. Let's see, we didn't go through that way. That's it. No, the other trail. That's the would trail have taken would have, we would have come if we didn't. We would have missed the cemetery if yeah, we had come that that's way. That's right. So here is just a big old harvest grove. Yeah. Oh, there's a sign there. For yeah. there. See, we went, the, we went, we went the, the long way the long around. Way around. And probably went back. <laughs> We're kind of used to doing that, everything. See, there's the tent patch walking trail, which we did eventually get to, but we just took the long yeah. way around to yeah. get it. Look at the old equipment in the grass. Yeah. Homestead self-guiding trail. Well, let's just go a little ways on. Yeah. Show people where you're supposed to go. <laughs> the other way. No well, we self-guided ourselves. There's yeah. more equipment here. Oh, yes. Oh, lots of old stuff in the yeah. bush. Like every old homestead. Yeah. All covered in moss. It's beautiful. Yeah. Homestead self-guiding trail. Well... We need to go a little ways down this sun and look what's this over here. It's part of some kind of building. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was a place for a water tank or something maybe on there. We'll just go in a little ways down here just to see yeah. where we should go. <coughs> We did this once before. We'll just go a little ways. <laughs> then we get up on top of Jackson's Hill. Jackson's Lake Hill. <coughs> oh, it was squirrel. worth the walk. Squirrel. It was worth the walk. Hang on. Oh, oh, he took off just as I was going to zoom in on him. Oh, he didn't get in there. Oh, the church here. Oh, he cut it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we really did miss a lot. Yeah, didn't we, we did miss a lot. Mm -hmm. The log house? Log house, I guess. Yeah, that'll be the, there's no 
There's not even a sign back there. There is a sign back there. We back there? Will, oh, well, we'll, we'll see the sign after. That's a pretty small log house. Yeah. But look what I found beside it. Look at that. Can't see. Choke. Hold on. Sorry. There we are. Choke cherries. There's not a lot of choke cherries this year, it doesn't seem like. No. There's stuff inside the zoo. Yeah. Some kind of a metal pan in there. She never even seen these guys. Oh, well, look at that. A whole choke cherry tree for me. Hmm. You could have lunch here. You could have lunch here. Panning for gold there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe washing dishes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or else read the sign. We always joke about, huh? we didn't see the sign. <laughs> so, this is probably the little log the house. Palace. The palace. Edwy, <laughs> oh, okay. The palace. Yeah. Edwy Vane was the eldest son of Percy and Elise. As the oldest child in the family, he became the son in charge of the farm and remained at St. Alban to work while his siblings were sent elsewhere as hired hands. When a young school teacher, Miss Emily Steer, became a regular visitor to St. Albans, Percy quite approved of her until he noticed the attraction between her and Edwy. Percy did not want to lose his son to marriage. Amid protests, Edwy and Emily were married in 1897 and settled into the house whose foundation you see here. They called it the Palace in Jest. As long as they remained living in the palace, Edwy worked on the homestead but by 1905 they decided to leave, much to Percy's displeasure, to start their own legacy. Edwy was very successful. In 1913 they bought a new farm and had Mr. Harms build their house, complete with tennis courts, which he named St. John's. Hmm. Percy sounds like um, maybe a difficult father. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, here we go around again. <laughs> Not around the mulberry bush either. Mm -hmm. You never know. <laughs> oh, more equipment. A plow. Yeah. And more over here. And more over there, yeah. What's this one? A cultivator? Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm eating my handful of choke cherries. Yeah. <laughs> In case you're wondering what that noise was. Okay, and then we're back to this trail again. The fork in the road. Yeah. That's where their garden was over there. Mm -hmm. Now that we've thoroughly confused Excuse anybody me, watching this as to where they should go. You just come and walk. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. You might walk in circles, but you yeah. can get lost because eventually you can find your way out of the maze. Yeah. Well, unless you get off and you just don't go off in the poison ivy and you find in the it. long grass. You might not. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what else have we missed? We the other side of the road. Over here first. Too. Nope, we were there. Did we go? That's oh, that's the well. the well. Okay, so we need to go across. Yeah. Because we didn't go across the other side where we were going to start. Yeah, I'm puffing. Well, this might be there. If you don't cut out anything, could be an hour long. Yeah. Hey, but it's worth it. You got yeah. your steps in. Yeah. <laughs> My weary old bones. Do 
Yes, but you could be at work yeah. doing steps there. Yeah. You say a bad day at golf is still better than a good day at work. Yeah. There's no bad days walking. They're all good days. It's the like coffee. Oh, there is bad coffee though. <laughs> You know, somebody suggested that, you know, maybe once you get enough subscribers, people would start sending you coffee to try out. Yeah. You could get sponsored by coffee people. Yep. They might turn you into a coffee okay. snob yet. Yep. Oh, yes, we missed quite a bit over here. Oh. And I'm going to have to breathe a bit. The big house. Okay. Uh, which should we start with? I guess we'll Let's go over the, to that after. The big house. Percy designed the big house, but the excellent construction was due to Mr. Harms, a family friend. The boys were kept busier than usual in 1906, helping Mr. Harms build while keeping up the farm. The house cost 1560 to construct. <laughs> There are eight bedrooms upstairs and a kitchen, dining room, music, billiard room, and the library on the main floor. The east wing was added in 1916 for house guests. Many of the visitors were colleagues of Norman's, here to study insects and plant life. Grand parties were held here, especially on New Year's Eve. Percy would play the organ while couples danced through the music room, down the hall, into the dining room, and around again. The red hall lamp, a gift from Edwy and Harry, gave a rosy glow as dancer, dancers whirled beneath it. Percy, Edwy, and Harry often sang as a trio at parties. The log house and the big house were known as St. Albans. All the family homes were given names. Percy loved flags and used them to signal the family and neighbors. Alice made him the St. Albans flag, black with gold cross and crown. across the ocean and far away. Percy Criddle was not your typical pioneer. He was a merchant who knew nothing of farming. Educated in England and Germany, Percy had studied law, medicine, and music. At the age of 38, he decided to uproot his two households, sail across the ocean to Canada, and make his fortune farming the wheat fields of the world. His two households included Elise and her five children, and Alice and her four children. Percy kept a diary. It is full of jams about pioneer life and the land and wildlife before extensive settlement. It also provides insight into the life of the Criddlevane family. The trip across the ocean was miserable. Half the family traveled steerage to save money. The family, three adults and nine children, arrived in Brandon in August 1882. Percy took a couple of days prospecting for a homestead. Then on August 24, 24th, with land registered and provisions bought, the family set out for their new home. Percy went on ahead while Alice and Elise and the children were to follow him. Not familiar with driving oxen, the women and children arrived late that evening. Hmm. Yeah, we should have started here because this is where the house was all the Yeah, oh well. <laughs> If we have to admit that we've never been here. Yeah. The boys were here. The boys yep. made a video here years ago. I'd have to dig that out. Probably ten years ago. Oh, it's more than that, I think. The foundations there. Actually, no, it wouldn't be ten years. Yeah. This is all that's left. Yeah. It's pretty sad. Yeah. Oh, and there's another sign way over there. I think we better maybe take this and there's a pathway going that way. Yep. The memory lasts on my phone. <laughs> yep. Okay. This is the way to go.
a nice wide open spot wide. to build yep. their house. And another sign. I'm out of breath. <laughs> you need it. Tennis, anyone? Percy enjoyed sporting events and over the years encouraged competition among his 13 children. In the first summer of 1883, he decided to build a tennis court. For 23 years, the children had to cut the various tennis courts with knives and scissors. They did not own a lawnmower until 1906. <laughs> this was one of the three tennis courts on the property. Lawn tennis parties were popular events at the St. Albans homestead. The girls were even encouraged to play. Maida, Stuart, and Talbot were known as very good tennis players, winning tournaments in local towns in Winnipeg. The children competed in many sports. Harry played hockey for Trees Bank, and Edwy, Harry, and Cecil were well-known football players. Cecil was the smallest of the boys, but a nimble wrestler. His older brothers liked to taunt the biggest players at football matches to wrestle with their little brother. Cecil always won. Years later, Edwy carried on the family tradition of lawn tennis parties at his farm called St. John's. Wow. Yep. Who'd, have, who'd have thunk it? All that stuff, parties and tennis yep. courts and everything just out here on the wide open prairie. prairie. <laughs> and there's the start of the caraganas over there. Yep. Makes me want to go back to the museum again and have a closer look at, at pictures of what the place looked like when yeah. it wasn't <coughs> the road. Yeah. It must have been a beautiful place. Yeah. Oh, and there's a nice hot work out there. Yeah. Nice shade. Mm -hmm. Isn't sweating now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, our morning walk has. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing we wouldn't have wanted to do this in here. And another sign. Another sign. Yeah, no, this must be in a garden or something. Lean years. Oh, yes. <sighs> like many pioneering families, the first years were extremely difficult. Arriving late the first year, they had no crop, no produce, and no garden. Supplies had to be bought, and cash was scarce. Hunting supplemented the food supply, but gunpowder was dear. Alice and some of the children developed scurvy in the lean years, not enough fruit and vegetables. Percy wrote, nothing but shorts and potatoes with an occasional rabbit to eat, all of us half famished. Really, tis almost too disheartening and one loses courage. Where you are standing was, one, oh, was once one of the many gardens. Fruit and vegetables were nurtured and stored for the winter months. Each of the children had their own garden plot where they were encouraged to grow wild fruit. The children credited their knowledge of plants and insects to their work in the gardens. At an early age, they were responsible for weeding and picking harmful insects from the plants. As adults, several of the first generation bred their own plant varieties. Harry bred roses. Evelyn bred vegetables, Stuart bred lilies and sunflowers, Maida bred geraniums, Talbot bred lilacs, and he crossed pumpkins with marrow to make Marrowkins. Marrowkins? I never hmm. heard of them. Log hunting shelter. <laughs> Is that what we saw down there, maybe? Oh, that could be it. And lilacs. Lilacs. It'd be nice in the springtime when the lilacs are blooming. Yeah. Blooming lilacs. That's why uh, someone said pretty in the fall too with all yeah. the colors. So. Might have to be a season up to the sign. There we go. Is it working? The camera again? died and now it's uh -oh. we must have hit the, we must then. have hit the hour mark or yeah. something. Four. The first golf course on the homestead was created in nineteen fourteen with four holes. 
Prior to that, it had been played indoors as a parlor game. How that occurred is left to our imagination. Golf became the cat's pajamas after World War I, largely because there were not as many men around to play team sports. You are standing on the ninth green, a sand green. This was the last hole of the course. The golf course went through five different... So, we had to take a little bit of a break here. The phone died, my camera, and uh, got hot. So we had to go back to the van and put the air conditioning on full blast and cool it down. And we're back at it. So this was the last hole of the course. The golf course went through five different configurations over the years. The last course had nine holes, most of which were across the road. So that open field over there, yeah. I guess, was golf course. Yeah. Head back, head this way. Back to the home uh, house site. So we're at the house site it's over here. Oh, look at a random post. <laughs> it never gets old, I tell you. Oh, and there's those choke cherries. Yeah, yeah there's those choke cherries. Oh, there's no poison ivy there. Okay, she's going to breathe it. Just to make sure. It's kind of like cricket trail. Oh, must be getting close to quiet on us. And the old, the old milk house. Hmm. Not much of a milk house, but it's Dido's Dairy. Dido's Dairy. Was built in April 1883. Percy did not like animals. <laughs> That's interesting. So the I oldest, like bugs, though. <laughs> so the oldest girls, Minnie and Isabel, uh, Isabel did, did die. I don't know how you say that. Did all. Were put in charge of Mrs. Nellie the cow and her calf, Mr. Calf. <laughs> the milk, cream, and butter were wonderful additions to the family larder during the lean years. Any extra was sold in Brandon for much welcome money, as Percy said. Pretty good business, but a lot of work for the girls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the weather station. The thermometer box, as it was known, contained a number of weather instruments. Percy brought thermometers from England, but they broke the first winter from the cold. Imagine that, eh? A new set was sent from England that could endure a Manitoba winter. Percy began weather records in 1884 and sent one copy to Ottawa for the meteorological record. The second copy he kept and added notes about wildlife, bird migration, and other observations. It would become a valuable record of weather and natural history. Hmm. Would you look at that? That's a pretty tree. Yeah. Lots of pretty trees around. And that's it? And that's it, that's all. We're back to where we should have started from. This is from. Where, where we started from. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed our tour. We thought it was nice and cool. It was cool when we left, but that's about 24. And guess what? I'm sweating. But then I could sweat watching you guys watch this video. You will probably notice the in here on that uh, we did this a little backwards. This is where the big house used to be where I'm standing. And uh, we didn't go this way, we went the other way. We've seen buildings, we went. 
We didn't see the sign. We didn't follow the signs. Anyways. We did a self-guided tour. A self-guided tour. <laughs> kind of what we do. Anyways, it's well worth coming out here. Um, they're a very ambitious family. Golf course and tennis courts. And, and yeah. Well, no TV, no internet, so you got to amuse yourself somehow. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you watched till the end. And uh, we are getting close to 100 videos now. And uh, there's something coming up for that. Anyways, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you don't miss another one. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Lots of pretty trees around. And that's it? And that's it. That's all. We're back to where we should have started from. This is from. Where, where we started from. <laughs>